I've been informed by Councillor Troy of your interest in pursuing career advancement, particularly in the area of leadership. The Councillor is apparently quite convinced of your aptitude, and has even gone so far as to request that I personally meet with you to provide what mentorship I can. Hence the reason I've called you here. It perhaps goes without saying that the leadership opportunities available to you aboard this vessel are varied, and not all of them lead to command of a starship. Nevertheless, there are a few foundational principles I wish to share with you that are sure to be instructive regardless of where your career aspirations take you. Because our time today is somewhat limited, I should like to begin by focusing on the first of these principles. The others we can discuss in due course. Lieutenant, to truly take command in any endeavor of life, one must first master the art of self-command. All too often aspiring leaders hastily pursue strategies aimed at effectively leading others, without considering whether they possess what is needed to effectively lead themselves. This is no trifling matter. A man worthy of following is, above all, a man possessing a deep-rooted competence. Yet such competence can never truly be achieved if one is devoid of the capacity to command himself. Self-command is rooted in one essential quality. Integrity. Integrity with one's principles. Integrity with one's commitments. Integrity with one's vision. Without integrity, an aspiring leader lacks his most crucial asset. A steadfast, unwavering center, which will hold him fast amid life's ceaseless trials. If attended to properly, this center may grow in solidity such that others may perceive it and seek refuge in it. When this occurs, the makings of a true leader have emerged. What is crucial for you to learn, Lieutenant, is that integrity is not a feeling or a trait possessed only by the gifted few. It is a muscle, one we all possess, and one which must be exercised through deliberate repetition if it is to bear the true weight of command. Thus, my most practical advice to you is this. Honor yourself, Lieutenant. Not by uttering vain affirmations or by strutting about in foolish arrogance, no, honour yourself by keeping your word. To others, of course, but most importantly to yourself. If you have resolved to do something, do it. If your principles demand that you abstain from some activity, abstain. Let every word you speak and every action you take abide in complete integrity with who you are, who you aspire to be, and what your values require. It is in the practice of standing in absolute integrity with one's innermost being that discipline is forged and discipline is the key which, for you, will unlock many doors. If you acquire it, begin then with small, seemingly mundane things, the things you know you ought to do each day but have hitherto avoided. Be faithful to yourself and others with little, and in time you will have developed the strength to remain faithful in things of much greater importance. Stand as a beacon of integrity in a world of listless shadows, and in time the lost and aimless may perceive your light and approach it, then, Lieutenant, will you be fit to lead, fit to command.